Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here to review Cult Express, the brand new expansion for the game Couriers and Armoured Train. The expansion was provided to me by Coiled Spring to review, but that doesn't change my thoughts and opinions on the game. Let's roughly touch on how this new team-based expansion works and how it sort of twists things up, and then I'll give you my thoughts on the game. So in Couriers and Armoured Train, a second train pulls up alongside going in the opposite direction. And as you may guess, this allows players to jump between the two trains, so there's plenty more ways to loot. The expansion brings in the team mode. You are either on the red team or the blue team, and you will be trying to outscore the other team in a number of ways, the normal loot, as well as a few new loot opportunities. So there's some new bags, these red bags, which are basically sort of worth almost double the sort of standard beige bags. And there's also some intel. You're trying to get, say you're on the red team, you're trying to get the blue team's intel and vice versa. There is also a neutral tile as well, which does absolutely nothing, but just means you never quite know, if you've only seen one of them, where the other ones are. You play the game out over the five normal rounds using the same great programming that plays Cult Express normally. So from your hand of cards, you're choosing an action and playing it onto a pile in the middle, following the sort of special rules for that round, maybe playing cards face up, face down when you're going through a tunnel and so on. And then you are when everyone's done that for all of the round, you flip that deck over and actually action it and see what happens. Now, a few things are different in this. First of all, there is no marshal. Instead, that's been replaced by the three couriers, although we actually like to refer to them as sort of like the sheriff deputies, because that just, well, made us all sort of say, I didn't shoot the sheriff, I shot the deputy and all that sort of funness. There's three of those that you're going to be trying to avoid, but you're not going to be able to move them like the Sheriff in the base game, or the Marshal in the base game. And then there's also a brand new card, a Nudge. This allows you to play a Nudge card on your turn and give one of your teammates a basic action. So that's maybe helping them to do something, or if they have to do an action, maybe it's even disrupting what their plans were but you're allowed to talk because you're in teams, but the other team can always hear you as well. So you've got to sort of weigh up, am I giving too much information away of what we're trying to do? You're gonna get a bonus at the end of the game for whoever shot the couriers the most, with the couriers shooting you like the marshal would if you run into them, causing you to maybe go down or up, because the couriers can be on the roof of the armoured train. There's a few things which I'll touch on in the review section that are different about the armoured train, including a Gatling gun which you can fire at anyone along the train that's going to do uh, on the roof of the train, that's going to be quite impactful, and some special sort of carriages that if you start your turn on them, you're going to get a benefit. Otherwise though, it's Cult Express as a team-based thing with a second train. So that's roughly how it plays. Now, what do I think? Let's start off with the elephant in the room of what happens if my team isn't evenly matched with the other team? Maybe it's 3v2. Well, Il Professoro is kind of there to help. He will join the team with the less number of players and with his sort of deck of a few different actions, maybe shooting certain uh, opponents or maybe giving you a nudge, maybe increasing the amount that he's managed to loot for you, he's just going to be there as a little extra. Now it certainly means that you can play the expansion and he does potentially get you the loot for your team to win the game. It's not something massively extra to really think about because it's just playing cards off his deck into the main pile in the middle. It's really nothing too much uh, to sort of stress your head about. It's not a rat, like a, a big AI that needs to be run, 
but it's also quite uninspiring. It does, however, allow it always to be playable as a team mode, and that's the only way you're going to be playing the expansion. So while it's kind of, it feels a bit lacklustre for one team to not have the number of players, at least it's in the box allowing you to always play with the expansion. Now, this is a brand new way to play Cult Express, and that certainly is interesting. It does take a little bit of time to get used to the fact that you're not trying to just shoot everyone, you're only trying to shoot the other team, and those new nudges were allowing you to actually help someone else. Normally, you don't ever want to help anyone else in Cult Express, so it is a nice difference and a slightly different way of thinking. Not everyone's going to want that from Cult Express. I personally love the chaos of everyone against everyone, but a new way to play the game just allows it to be fresher when it hits the table from time to time. There are two new characters included in the box. First of all, we have Misty. I really like Misty's power because normally when you take a, a shot from someone else, well, that's pretty bad for you. She can use those shots in her deck as punches. Normally they clog your hand up. Yeah, a punch isn't the most useful thing, but at least if you draw a hand and it's got one or two of them, you can actually use those cards. And it maybe just stops you having to skip a turn to draw cards once or twice in a whole game. That can still be pretty useful. And remember, punching makes someone else drop loot and Cult Express is all about getting the most loot. So she's quite a fun character to play and definitely I'll always have her as a possibility when playing, regardless of if it's the team mode or sort of the regular Cult Express. The other character is, well, two characters kind of because it's the twins. I absolutely love the artwork on this one as they are in that perfect sort of cartoony one on top of the other one's shoulders in a trench coat trying to sort of be like, yeah, I'm, I'm old, I can buy some, uh, some liquor, some whiskey, I can get on this train and rob it. And the twins' power, well, again, it's also pretty cool. I mean, yeah, you've got some of the originals where, like, Tuco can shoot upwards and downwards and stuff like that. Well, the twins is going to be allowing you to play more cards. When you go through a tunnel, the twins play two cards face up. So everyone still knows what they're doing. So it's kind of balanced in that sense of normally a tunnel's great because you can put a card upside down. No one knows what you've done. But you can move and loot, or you could maybe go up and shoot, and you can just do that little bit extra in the round. And that's what the twins are good for, but remember, there's not always a tunnel. The Couriers and Armoured Train is an expansion, and it is slightly different to the normal game being a team mode, and yet it doesn't feel like they've really added too many more rules. As long as that person's not having to sort of worry about Il Professoro and having to deal, uh, sort of deal with doing that, their cards, there's not that much more from like the basic sort of just base game of Cult Express. We actually introduced a brand new player to Cult Express via this expansion, and it was twofold. Yeah, there was a couple of more rules, but they also had a team that could help them. They could actively discuss what's a good thing and a bad thing, and I found that actually was a nice way to introduce someone to the game. After sort of, you know, that first round of chaos going on, they get the idea and can play just like with the base game. There's not many times that you can just throw them in at the deep end with an expansion as well, but Couriers and Armoured Train just adds a couple of tweaks without really making it more complicated. As I suggested, the martial cards are removed from your deck, but you are going to be adding the new nudge card in. Now, the new nudge just adds a really nice choice. If it's in your hand, giving a teammate some sort of basic action, absolutely love the idea of that. And there was, at times, when we were playing the game, in one game, I really needed to be able to get to one of the briefcases ahead of the courier movement, because one of the new cards means the couriers swap level. Now, that's great, but when you run into a courier, you take your neutral bullet, you change floor, they're going to be stood on the briefcase with no way for us to move it. 
and I don't have enough actions like cards to get there and loot. But my teammate, via the discussion, was able to play the nudge card, giving me that movement across from one carriage to the next to get the loot. And we won pretty much by the thousand, or the thousand basically took us from behind to in front of the other team. It was a great play and it felt really cool that the team had worked together to actually pull that off. And I, that's why I really like the nudge card in this mode. I do wish that it did something in the normal modes. In one of the other expansions, it adds the light bulb. Now, the light bulb has something special in that expansion, but if you're playing with it at any other time, it's basically like copy the previous card. Now, I wish the nudge did something like that. Maybe it could allow you to take one or two actions. Maybe it was a movement or you could swap the track, uh, swap between one train and the other. I just wish you could always use the nudge card because otherwise it does mean you have to take your martial card out, make sure you put your nudge card in, and then if you're trying to go back to the non-team, reverse that. I just wish that they, there was a way it was designed that all the cards could be included in the deck. Now with the second train, there is the amazing part that they are moving sort of alongside each other, so where you are stood, you can jump across from one train to the other, but at the end of the round that train's going to move along a little bit, so where you're jumping to could change, that's a really cool thing to keep your mind on, and the new train is full of some really cool carriages. Now, first of all, there is the coal wagon, which doesn't have a downstairs, so you can't cross there too easily. It would also be great in a normal train just to disrupt the movement. On it, there's three tiles, three tokens, three lots of coal. Only one of them scores because it's actually gold nugget, a gold nugget rather than a coal nugget. And I love that sort of risk. And when one person's got it, they can sort of bluff like, oh, yeah, well, it was, uh, didn't, didn't get it, I got the coal, it's worth nothing. Do the other team believe them? One of, the, one of those coals is worth 1,500 because it's gold, it's amazing. And it just means that there's that competition of, well, we either need to pick up that, that coal, that, those coal tokens and see if they've got the gold, maybe go and try and punch them, chase them down, make them drop it. And yeah, I really like that sort of, that luck of, and that sort of push your luck of going for coal, even though, well, that loot could get you nothing. The other carriages are also really cool. So yes, I said about the Gatling guns on top that allow you to fire everyone on the top of the trains, but there's a carriage that allows you to heal two neutral bullets if you're starting your turn there. That's like at the start of the round, that's awesome. And there's another one that if you're starting there, you draw two more cards. Those new carriages are really, really awesome and just add a little bit of extra choice of, ah, I don't really, I wanna move that way for the loot, but I don't really want to move yet because I need to heal. I don't want this many neutral bullets in my deck and that sort of stuff. So some great choices from the new sort of wagons, the new carriages that are in the box. So a lot of this has sounded very positive with a hint of a negative. And that's where I sit with this because I enjoy the game, I enjoy the team-based mode, but I do think the expansion has slightly missed the mark. But I think players can get around that. First of all, it's not been designed as modules. I do not understand it. Make the team variant optional. Give us rules that are just for playing competitively, everyone against everyone, as per normal. You can make them up and make them very easily. You can just be like, okay, we don't need to put the team briefcases out. We're going to just put these loot together. We're going to mix and match the carriages up. You can do that, and it doesn't matter. In fact, that's probably my preferred way to use the expansion, because it means you can play that chaotic, normal... Um, Cult Express, but you do have the option for team play now and again. And coming back to that, the modularity, you're going to be using those new characters in whatever game you play, so you might as well use the wagons or whatever in 
other games as well. Now, this is a slightly selfish um, bad point. I have the Cult Express Big Box. I now have a big box which isn't big enough to hold all the content, which seems crazy considering the big box was released basically like last year. And now there is the Couriers and Armoured Train box that has to sit on the shelf as well. I wish they'd either, it's more a negative, the big box thought ahead because they knew they were releasing this expansion and had a gap in it, or in some way just sort of made this box smaller. I don't know how they would have done that because well, it's effectively a full new train, but there was a way. I'm sure there was a way that they could have somehow only had some carriages, those new cool ones, and a new train at the front and done something. But it does just mean, slightly selfishly, that now I've got to have all of this on the shelf when the big box should be able to hold everything. So overall, I have enjoyed playing the team mode of the Couriers and Armoured Train expansion. However, it should have been built in a way that you could use elements that you wanted in your normal sort of Cult Express gameplay. Now, it actually has been designed that way. It's just the rulebook isn't there to sort of help you do it. If you've played Cult Express two or three times, you can pretty much guesstimate your way through it though. And I think most people will because it's fun having those new carriages with different things, being able to shuffle them in sort of to the other carriages just to make each train feel a little different. Maybe in one gameplay you've got only the train carriage that heals you and just the standard ones. The next one you've got the coal bit in the middle um, and you, you know that's disrupting the movement along the ground floor so it forces people maybe a bit more to the top. Then in the next one you've got a second train and allowing people to jump back and forwards. It's certainly still got some of the chaos but some of that edge of chaos is lost as you are working together with your teammates. Those teammate choices though are really cool and the new nudge card really does mean sometimes you can do some great teammate plays just to get that last bit of loot that's going to win you the game. So it's a good expansion, I'm going to be very much enjoying it but maybe not quite how it's intended by the rulebook as Cult Express is expanded in a new cool way. Teams won't be for everyone, but some of the content in here, or most of the content in here, will be enjoyed regardless if you're in the teams mode as it's supposed to be played, or thrown in with the rest of the stuff. Anyway, that is the brand new Cult Express expansion. Let me know what you think of it if you've played it in the comments section below. Do you like Cult Express as it was? Do you really really love the new team mode, let us know in the comment section below. And until next time, check out other news, reviews and stuff on the channel. Have a great day.